Hi everyone, and welcome back to my video series on coding with Flutter. Today, we'll take a look at input validation in Flutter, and in particular, we will see how to create our own regex validators that we can apply to text field inputs. First of all, what is a regex? It stands for regular expression, and it is a sequence of characters that define a search pattern. So, this is a pattern that is normally used in string searching algorithms, but also has a number of other interesting applications. One of them is input validation. So today we'll see how we can use regex to restrict the types of characters that the user can type into a Flutter app, and I'll show you a full example of how we can apply this for numeric input as well as email validation. Before we dive into the details, I just want to show you a quick demo of the code that we'll be studying today. So over here, there's a simple screen where we can choose two options, make a payment or forgot password. When we tap on the first one, we are taken to a screen where we can type in a payment amount. If this was a real app, we would want to apply some sort of filtering to the characters that the user can type in. For example, we should let the user only have two decimal digits. And also, we might want to limit the maximum payment amount that is allowed. So, if I try this out, you can see that I can only type in two digits past the decimal separator. And also, if I try an input that is too big, the app stops me from entering more than four digits. In addition, a submit button appears once I have entered a number that is valid. So here, if I come back out, I can see another option, which is simply an email validator. So in this form, I can start typing in an email address. However, the submit button only becomes available when the email matches a certain pattern. So for example, I can type in test at test dot. And when I start typing the C for com, the submit button appears. All right, so both examples use regex validation. And on the rest of this video, we're going to talk about how regex works and how we can integrate it uh, into our Flutter apps. So I want to start explaining regex with a simple use case. And I found this page here with some common regular expressions. So if we scroll down, we can find the first one down here. Uh, which is for matching a username. So what we're going to do is to take this pattern over here and uh, copy it over to this other website, which is called regex101.com. So when we put our regex in here, you can see that the right of the page fills up with a useful explanation of how this regex works. Now, this regex requires an input stream that has any of these characters, so a to z, 0 to 9, an underscore or a hyphen, and this is defined with a square brackets. The expression with curly braces over here tells us how many characters we want, so between 3 and 16. So we expect that if we enter at least three characters, our regex should be satisfied. So by doing this, we can type 1, 2, 3, and we can see over here that it says we get a full match. Now, if we try to add any characters that don't appear in our regex, so for example, adding a dot, we can see that we don't get a match anymore. So you can think of regex as a black box, which takes a string as an input and outputs zero or more matches. Now, a match is a substring of the input string for which the regular expression is satisfied. So for the purposes of our input validation example, we only care if either we have a full match, which is when the entire input string matches our regex, or we don't have a full match. So even if our regex validator returns a partial match, we don't consider validation to be successful. Okay, so now that we have seen how regex works, we can head to our code and see how we can use it in Flutter. So over here, I have this generic regex validator class, 
which takes a regex source as an input string. And then it implements a isValid method, which takes an input string and returns true if we find a full match. Now, the way this is implemented is by creating a regexp object, which is a class offered by Dart Core. Then we get all the matches and we only return true if we find a match that applies to the whole length of the string from start to end. So this is our main regex building block. And you can see that this class here implements string validator, which is an abstract class that I've defined over here. And as the name implies, it is simply a class to validate strings in general. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is a class which I've called input validation page. This is a stateful widget and we use it to present this page that you see over here. So the most important part of this class uh, is a method called build text field over here. And we use this to build a text field object. Every time you need user input from the keyboard, you're very likely to be using this class. Now, if we tap through to reveal the documentation, we see that this class is very configurable and it takes a lot of different properties. I won't talk about all of this today, but I recommend you spend some time reading through the documentation so that you can learn how text field can be used. As far as we are concerned, the main thing that we are interested in is this input formatters array. So let's focus on this first and see what the docs say. So here it says optional input validation and formatting overrides. Formatters are run in the provided order when the text input changes. So when we tap through to see what a text input formatter is, then we find that it is an abstract class, meaning that we need to implement our own text input formatter. And we need to override this method called format edit update. So how does this work? Suppose you are in the process of editing a text field. Each time the text is being edited, this method is called and it provides an old value and a new value, both of type text editing value. Now text editing value is simply a holder for the actual text. So let's see how we might implement our own text input formatter. So over here, I have uh, defined a validator input formatter, which implements text input formatter. It takes an editing validator, and I'll talk about why this is called like this in a second, and then implements the format edit update method. The way this is implemented is by checking the validity of the old value and the new value with our validator. And if the new value is invalid, but the old one was valid, then it returns the old value. Otherwise, we return the new value. So if you have a text field and the text that you've already entered uh, passes validation, and then you type in a new character that is invalid, then the validator input formatter class will say, hang on there, this is invalid, and it will return the old text instead. In practice, this means that any modifications that would make the input invalid will not be applied to the text of our text field. All right, so now that we've seen how uh, input formatters work, we can take another look at our input validation page and see how it is used. In our main.dart, file, at the bottom, we define a list view with two items and have a make payment and a forgot password method. Let's quickly take a look at forgot password. So in here, we create an input validation page and we pass in some properties and we can see something interesting. So we pass in an input formatter, which is of type validator input formatter, and this is the class that I was showing you. And this takes an email editing regex validator object as an input. Then we have a submit validator, which is of type email submit regex validator. So in essence, we have two validators, but why is that? 
So the way you can think about it is that you can have one validator, which is what you use as you type in your input, which is the email in this case. And this validator should not be very strict in the sense that it should let you input an email that is not yet fully formed. So this validator should be configured so that all these values are valid, even though only the last one is really a valid email. Instead, the submit validator is something that will always reject an email that is not valid, and only the last one will be accepted. So how does this work in practice? So let's try this out. So we can start typing in, and we can see that the characters are all accepted, and we can type in the at, but as soon as we type in something that you shouldn't do, so for example, if you try to tap a second at symbol, then this is rejected. So here what I have typed in is not yet a valid email, but satisfies our editing validator. And only when our submit validator is happy, then we should see a submit button. So here I can type in now test.com and we can see that the submit button appears. So in essence, I have built this code with a clear distinction between validation that takes place during editing and validation for submission. Okay, so now that we have seen the difference between editing and submission, we can look at the input validation page again a little bit more in detail. So if I head back to my code uh, and I can see how I create this, I can see that I can pass in a title and then an input decoration object. This is useful to give hints to the user about what they should type. Uh, I then pass in the text field style and the alignment value, and then a text that I want to show when the submit button appears. Then uh, I pass in the keyboard type, which is going to be email address for this case, but it's going to be uh, an input time number uh, for our payment example. After that, I pass in an input formatter and the submit validator that I was explaining earlier. And finally, there is a submit method, which is called when the input is valid and the user taps on the submit button. So this is what you would use, for example, to send a user to a new page, depending on what your specific navigation flow looks like. So I have tried to make input validation page as customizable as possible, so that if you want, you could import it and use it in your own projects. Okay, so now we can take a look at the code for the input validation page once again, and, and just uh, have a review of the implementation. So first of all, it's a stateful widget, and the reason for that is that we hold the input value as a state variable so that we can show or hide the submit button depending on the result of the submit validator. Then in the method that builds our text field, uh, we can see that we have this unchanged uh, callback. And we use this to set the state, which is the text inside our text field. So anytime something changes, then our value is updated. And then when we submit, we can use that value as the input of our submit validator, uh, which happens over here. There is also a usability improvement that I've made. So at any time, the user could tap on the down button down here, which automatically dismisses the keyboard. However, I actually want the text field to keep the focus if the submit validator returns false. So to do this, I need two ingredients. The first one is a focus node, which is an object that I use to set or unset the focus on a specific field. And the second one is a callback called editing complete, which is called when the user indicates that they are done editing the text field, for example, by typing the done button down here. So in my widget, I create the focus node and then pass it to my text field. Um, and that happens over here. And then I implement the editing complete to call the submit method, which is the same method that is called when the submit button is pressed. And in here, I first check if the input is valid. And if it is, I can release the focus. 
and then call the onSubmit on method uh, to notify the parent that we have a valid value. If it's not valid, then I want to focus again on the text field so that the user can keep editing. So if I didn't have this line over here to request the focus again, then the keyboard would just be dismissed. So this is a way of forcing the keyboard to stay up until the user submits a valid string. All right, so we are almost at the end of this video. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to show you the actual regex expressions for the validators that I've used in this example demo. So this can all be found at the top of my main.dart file. And I'm not going to explain the regex themselves. And if you want to play with these, you can take them from my code and use the regex one-on-one -on -one, uh, website that I was showing you earlier, uh, this one. Uh, but maybe the only thing worth mentioning here is that the editing and submit validators for both examples are actually different. And so you can see how the decimal number submit validator does not even use a regex expression at all. And instead, it just parses the string input into a double and check that it is greater than zero. So when you try the payment page, you will see um, over here that the submit button only appears once you enter a value that is non-zero, like that. In conclusion, today we've learned about regex validation and how this can be implemented in a Flutter example app. My message to you is that by using a combination of regex and careful tweaking of your input fields, you can make your app much more robust whenever user input is needed. As usual, I published all the source code for my project on GitHub at this page, and so in here you can find everything. And feel free to take a look. I tried to structure the code in this demo to be as reusable as possible so that you can take it and build your own validators on top of it. And the input validation page itself is configurable so that if you want a quick dropping solution for your project, then by all means, feel free to use it. As a last note, I'll be publishing more Flutter learning material in the future, and this will not be limited to YouTube only. So if you want to stay up to date with all my new material, you can subscribe on my website at codingwithflutter.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.